Hi, I'm Phil Constantine. On this trip, we go to Virginia Appomattox Courthouse, where the U.S. Civil War came to an end, where the surrender papers actually took place, the surrender ceremony. And this is a good scene of the entire area, McLean or McLean's house, the Meek store, the courthouse, and the Isabel house. You can see all this from the uh, crossroads out there. Travels with Phil continues at Appomattox Courthouse. This is the actual courthouse you see there, the tour coming out. And over here... This is the McLean house, and this is where the actual surrender took place. Looks like the sky is going to be surrendering some water here. Not too long. But this is where things officially, as far as the Army of the North, the Virginia, mostly Virginia Army, not always Virginia, where Lee surrendered to Grant. And guess who was the person who wrote the paperwork? Eli Parker. He was an Iroquois, but he was also a general. Hello, I'm Ernie Price, a park ranger here at Appomattox Courthouse National Historical Park. If you visit the park today, one of the most confusing things that many visitors uh, encounter is the name of the park. The name of this whole village is Appomattox Courthouse. That's three words. Uh, but General Lee and General Grant met in the parlor of the McLean House uh, behind me. If you visit the park, you certainly can see it, but you'll also see the village uh, that was Appomattox Courthouse in 1865, more than 20 historic structures, including the courthouse building just down the stage road. Today, that serves as the visitor center. There's a museum. There's a small theater with videos shown every half hour. Also, in the summertime, between Memorial Day and Labor Day, you can experience some of our living history programs, and they, too, begin in the courthouse building, the visitor center. Just behind you, to the west of the village, is also the last battlefield of the Army of Northern Virginia that is within the park. The Battle of Appomattox Courthouse, fought on the morning of April 9, 1865, just hours before General Lee surrendered the Army to General Grant. Along the village here is the stage road, the Lynchburg-Richmond stage road. Per the terms of the surrender that General Grant laid down for General Lee, was that the Confederate soldiers would formally lay down their weapons, their military equipment. And for the Confederate infantry, which was most of Lee's forces here, that was along this road on Wednesday, April the 12th. After that, Confederate soldiers received their parole passes to go home, passes that were printed in the Clover Hill Tavern, the oldest building in the village, and it still stands today. It was on the way home that soldiers would learn of the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. But come to Appomattox Courthouse National Historical Park and then visit, and visit truly an American treasure. All right, so to give you some background on what happened leading up to this, let's go to this National Park Service video. In early April, 1865, federal forces under Grant had finally broken through General Robert E. Lee's lines. After nine and a half months, the siege of Petersburg was over. Lee was forced to retreat and abandon the Confederate capital of Richmond. Grant moved with him and the race was on. Lee was hoping to join forces with General Joseph Johnston's army in North Carolina. Grant knew the importance of not letting the two forces join, so he kept blocking the Confederate escape route south. For a week, the two armies clashed every day, and Lee's forces took unsustainable losses. It was at Appomattox Station where a division of Grant's cavalry under General George Custer finally dashed in front of Lee, blocking his way. On April 8th, Federal forces captured 25 pieces of artillery and 1,000 prisoners at the Battle of Appomattox Station. The next morning, Lee tried to fight his way out. For a moment, an escape route seemed open just west of Appomattox Courthouse. But the open door was slammed shut by a column of 25,000 Federal infantry, including some 5,000 United States Colored Troops. The ragged remnants of the Army of Northern Virginia were now effectively surrounded. Between the two armies was Appomattox Courthouse. It was a small place in a tobacco farming area. A few dozen structures clustered around the Richmond Lynchburg Stage Road. A general store, a tavern and guest house, slave quarters and blacksmith shops. Perhaps a hundred people in all. 
For three days, the two generals had exchanged notes. I shall see to it that he gets this immediately. Thank you, Colonel. In the last one, Lee used the word surrender. Grant asked Lee to pick a place where they could meet. Lieutenant Colonel Charles Marshall of Lee's staff went into the village and chose the home of Wilmer McLean. At about one in the afternoon, Lee went inside and waited in the parlor. It was about 1.30 when Grant arrived with his staff. They had ridden more than 20 miles. Grant's trousers were tucked into his muddy boots. A federal officer remembered that General Lee was dressed in a new uniform. His tall, commanding form contrasted strongly with the short figure of General Grant, clothed in a soiled uniform. To Grant, Lee was a man of great dignity. For a while, they chatted in a friendly way. Then, Lee asked Grant to write out terms of surrender. Each Confederate soldier would have to promise not to take up arms again. But this done, Grant wrote, each officer and man will be allowed to return to their homes, not to be disturbed by the United States. Grant paroled the Confederate soldiers all of them. Now Lee came forth with a special request. Many of his men owned their horses. Could they take their animals back to their farms? Grant knew how essential a horse could be for a farmer. He consented to Lee's request, and then he gave rations to the hungry Confederates. This will do much toward conciliating our people, Lee said. Each man had made his choice hoping to end the war with civility and mercy for all. Grant signed his terms and Lee his acceptance. It was 3 p.m. on Palm Sunday, April 9th, 1865, and it was over. As Lee rode away, a Pennsylvania regimental band across the road from the McLean house struck up a tune, Old Lang Syne. In the Clover Hill Tavern, a hand crank press was quickly set up to print parole passes for each Confederate soldier. With these passes, the Southerners could go home. The formal surrender took three days. On April 12th, about 22,000 Confederate infantry, one division at a time, stretched through the village on the muddy road. For over six hours, the Confederates stacked arms in front of a federal division led by General Joshua Chamberlain. Chamberlain wrote, we received them with the honors due troops at the shoulder and in silence. A lot of ceremonies involved in all of this. All right, this is the McLean or McLean house, depending on how you want to say it. This is the actual house where the surrender was assigned. Smithville well, continues here at Appomattox. This is the McLean House. This is where the actual surrender took place. This couch right here. That was part of the original furniture here. And uh, pottery up there. It's original too. I'm original, but I wasn't here at the time. Oh, well, I guess I can't get uh, let humor go by, no matter what I do. All right, some other uh, views of the house. Now, over to the uh, Appomattox Courthouse itself, which is not where the, the uh, surrender was signed, but they do have a very nice museum there, part of an old Georgian flag. Uh, this is a, a display about Eli Parker, the man that wrote up the uh, paperwork. Uh, for this surrender. Beale's 9th Virginia battle flag. The stars and bars, some folks will call it. This is small parts of uh, Robert E. Lee's headquarters flag, the two little pieces you see on the right-hand side there. This is a U.S. letter, a U.S. Grant's letter to Robert E. Lee. And some of the ink uh, out of the uh, surrender was taken out of this inkwell. 
and a flag that was draped over Lincoln's coffin uh, as uh, he was uh, taken through uh, Philadelphia. And then finally, a last look here at some of the events after the surrender. So that wasn't just it here at Appomattox. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up by clicking on the button below. You're welcome to leave comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And finally, if you'd like to see more of my videos, please subscribe to my channel by clicking the button over on the bottom right hand corner. Thank you again for watching.